Hey guys, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's current affairs class. I hope all of you know we have launched the live courses for RBI, SBI, and NABARD, and the crash course for NABARD grading. If you want to know more about the course, you can do so on the app as well as on our website. Okay. So let's begin today's first question because the introduction is over. So the first question is. What is the scholarship amount per month in the Deen Dayal Sparsh Yojana? The right answer here is option A, 500 rupees. Now guys, recently Department of Post has launched this Deen Dayal Sparsh Yojana. The basic purpose of it is to arouse the interest of the students in your postage stamps. That is the basic idea. And for that, uh, they are going to give the scholarship amount to the students. The Sparsh uh, as you can see in the name, has a full form and the full form is scholarship for promotion of aptitude and research in stamps as a hobby. So this is the full form that you need to remember. Now guys, there will be two levels on which the students will be judged or you can say selected for the uh, final prize. One would be your written quiz and another would be your philately project. Philately guys is the study of your postage stamps. Now, the students who want to apply for the scholarship, they need to have 60% marks in the previous year's examination. That is the criteria. Okay, and 5% relaxation would be given to the SCST students. So, this is the basic eligibility and I have already told you the amount, 500 per month and 6,000 per year. Next question is, the central government is planning to introduce the anti-maritime piracy bill 2019 in the ongoing monsoon session of the parliament the bill aims to empower indian legislature to prosecute an act of piracy in the high seas it will align the domestic legislation with the un convention on law of the sea 1982 when did india ratify the treaty so india ratified this un clause in 1995 now what is this anti maritime piracy bill from the name itself it is for uh, basically uh, it is against the act of piracy. Now, what is uh, basically the limit or what is the crux of this anti-maritime piracy bill? I will tell you that, but before that, I want to uh, explain certain terms too, so that you can understand the bill better. Guys, let's take the example of India here. Suppose this is the coastline of India, okay? From the coastline till 12 uh, nautical miles, you have the territorial area. Now, in the territorial area, the domestic legislation is applied. So, ex uh, let's take an example. Suppose an act of piracy is committed within the 12 nautical miles from the coastline. Then the prosecution will be done under the IPC Act of 1860. Okay, the domestic legislation is applied. But beyond this, we did not have a, su a sufficient legislation to prosecute the pirates, okay? If the act of piracy is undertaken here, suppose, or if it is undertaken here, our domestic legislation was not that powerful. But now we have the anti-maritime piracy bill that gives us the power to prosecute any pirate who is committing this activity even in the high seas. Now, what is the high sea and what is the eco exclusive economic zone? So up to 12 nautical miles we had the uh, we had your territorial army uh, territorial area now from this point onwards up to 200 nautical miles we have the exclusive economic zone that means all the resources all the minerals which ever are present here can be utilized by private or government entities present in it okay that is the basic idea of the exclusive economic zone now we have any right till here beyond that high seas start okay now this anti-maritime piracy bill gives us the right to prosecute any person who is committing the act even in the high seas that is beyond 200 nautical miles limit now remember these limits these can also be asked because this is a very basic information a very basic part of your general awareness okay now let's discuss the key features of this Bill. First is that it is going to align uh, the domestic legislation with the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. Now, what does what does this UN clause do? 
the UN clause basically governed this ungoverned area everywhere in the world. Okay, the ocean area which is not governed by any country is governed by UN clause. That was the basic uh, agenda for creating this agreement. Okay, so now we have aligned our own legislation with the legislation of or with the international agreement that is UN Convention on the Law of the Sea 1982. India ratified it in 1995 and it is basically an agreement governing the ocean and its resources. Now it divides the marine area into five types. First is inter internal waters, then territorial sea, contiguous zone, exclusive economic zone and the high seas. Okay, so these are the five zones. Now, the second feature of the bill is that it empowers Indian legislation to prosecute any pirate even in the high seas. Third is that the punishment would be given uh, for piracy. The punishment would be 14 years of imprisonment and if the person has caused the death of another person during the piracy, then that person would be liable for life imprisonment or death penalty in case of the murder in the act of piracy. Accused, suppose that accused does not belong to India or that accused is from any other country. So that person would be prosecuted in India. And if the uh, nation of that person, suppose that person is from Somalia. So the if Somali, Somalian government says that transfer that person to us, India will do that only if it has signed the extradition tra treaty with that country. Okay. So, these are the key features of this anti-maritime piracy bill. I hope that you have understood. Now, next question is, where is the Pala wetland located? So, it is located in Mizoram. Recently, five uh, wetlands have been, uh, have been uh, put into the wetland convention, which is the Ramsar convention or the convention on the wetlands. It was adopted in 1971 in Ramsar, Iran. Now the five new wetlands are Palikaranai Marsh Reserve, Karikili Bird Sanctuary and Pichavaram Mangrove from Tamil Nadu, Pala uh, wetland from Mizoram and Shakya uh, Sagar from your Madhya Pradesh. Do remember these five wetlands. Now the total number of wetlands in India which are put in the Ramsar Convention uh, is 54. Again, this is the highest in the South Asia. So do remember such minute facts. Can any one of you tell me that how many blue flag certification beaches are there in India? This is your question. Okay. Next question is Rajasthan Gramina Jivika Vikas Parishad and Srinidhi have signed an MOU to establish Rajasthan's first and the country's third women's financial institution. Srinidhi is a government of Dash state, is an organization of the government of Dash state. So basically it is the Srinidhi is an organization governed by the government of Telang. Okay. So it is nothing but an agreement for establishing a bank like institution, a financial institution run by the women for the women. Okay. So that is the basic idea. Now, this Rajasthan Mahila Nidhi is basically modeled on Telangana's Women Fund model and it will be established as a state level cooperative financial institution and it will be established by the Rajasthan agency Rajivika. Okay? Can any one of you tell me that under which act the cooperative societies, the cooperative credit societies, let me be more precise, are governed in India? So, tell me that. A very recent uh, regulation on the UCBs came out and the, when I discussed that, I must have discussed about the legislation that govern the credit societies, the cooperative credit so societies and it is a very basic question that all of you should know. So tell me in the comment section below, which act governs the co cooperative credit societies. Next question is who has been appointed as the MD of NDDB? Mrida Limited. So here the right answer is Sandeep Bharati. Now this Mrida Limited is a new subsidiary 
created by the NDDB, National Dairy Development Board. The basic purpose of this is to uh, manage the manure. Okay, so uh, for managing the manure at the national level, we have the NDDB Mrida Limited, and Sandeep Bharati has been chosen as the MD of this organization, and it is established under the Companies Act of 2013. Rupees 9.5 crore is the uh, paid up share capital of this company, which is again an important fact, can be asked in the examination and directly related to your AIE. So do remember. Now one more fact related to NDDB is that it has registered a trademark named Sudhan for, common, for providing a common identity to the dung-based organic fertilizers okay so dung based organic fertilizers or manure that will be uh, that will be exploited out of the animals that for that uh, management this mrida uh, limited has been created moving ahead how much stake has lic sold in sun pharmaceutical so two percent stake has been sold now guys such questions uh, uh, have been asked in the examination of Nabad, particularly previously as well. Therefore, I have picked it up. So it has been sold for rupees three thousand crores, approximately. That would be suffice. Okay, three thousand crores would suffice your preparation. Okay, moving ahead. What is India's gross non-performing assets as of March twenty twenty-two? So here, five point nine percent is the right answer. 5.9% of the total outstanding loans as of March 2022. And this statement, guys, is given by the Minister of State of Finance uh, in the Lok Sabha. But, guys, this is also the fact given in the Financial Stability Report of RBI. So, it is an important percentage. So, do remember 5.9% was the gross NP of India as of March 2022, as per the FSR as well, as well as the information given by the Minister of State for Finance. Okay, now the Minister has said that the amount involved in the frauds reported by banks and selected financial institutions based on the date of their occurrence has declined by 8% in the last two years. And the amount has reduced significantly from 32,178 crores to rupees 3,785 crores. And this is a huge decrease in the number of frauds, okay, from 32,000 to 3,000. We are seeing in just two years. So that is important. Now remember the latest amount is only important. No need to remember this amount, okay. Moving ahead, India's gross non-performing assets has come down to a six-year low of 5.9 percent as of March 2022. Now the GNPA stand uh, used to stand at 10 lakh 36 thousand in 2018 but now it stands at 53 thousand 735 crores only. So again a very huge decline in the GNPA that India has witnessed. Now guys the situation of GNPA is not only worse in India, we have many more countries that are facing such a uh, kind of uh, crisis. Did you know that Russia is among them? Obviously, now we are seeing that many economic sanctions have been imposed on Russia, so NPA would be a uh, consequence of that. But South Africa, Indonesia, China and even US, they face the problems of NPAs. And the percentage or the severity of NPAs is in front of me. Okay? <clears throat> the highest is in Russia, then we have in India, then we have South Africa, then we have Indonesia and we have China, then we have US, although it has the least amount of NPAs, but it does have NPAs, okay? So, you need to remember the percentages, at least the one who has the highest. Then we have India's position in comparison to the major economies as far as the GNP is concerned. So, this is important as well as interesting for all of you to know. Now, we have three countries, uh, okay, we have uh, four countries of BRICS, Russia, India, South Africa, and your um, China. Only Brazil is not there. So, out of five, we have four countries which have the problem of NPAs. That is another interesting comparison. 
okay what is imf's latest forecast for india for fi23 so the latest forecast is 7.4 percent so here you can see guys that for the world 3.2 percent is the projection for the current year that is 2022 to 23 and for the next year 2.9 percent for india 7.4 percent and 6.1 percent that is all that's enough this much would be asked from you in the phase one of your examination so remember this much only world bank has appointed Indranit gill as the chief economist and senior vice president of for development economics with effect from september 1st 2022 he is in the dash uh, he is the dash indian to become the chief economist of the world bank so he is the second indian to become the chief economist of the world bank. okay so indarmit gill uh, is the second indian after your kaushik basu okay he's a very prominent economist and right now uh, gill has taken over his place basically he has become the second indian to become the chief economist of the world bank can anyone of you tell me the present chief economist of the imf okay let's come back to this news Indarmit Gill is currently the Vice President for the Equitable Growth Finance and Institutions at the World Bank. So do remember this present uh, occupation of Gill also, okay? It can also be asked in the examination. Nowadays, examiner does not ask questions directly. It you tends to ask questions indirectly, okay? Last question, when is the International Day for Conservation of Mangrove Ecosystem observed? So July 23 is the date, okay? Oh, sorry, July 26 is the date. Okay, July 26 is the date. And there is a special reason for which we celebrate this uh, day or observe. So it is the death anniversary of Greenpeace activist from Micronesia, Hehau uh, Daniel Nanoto. So he's the person who died on this July 26. And in a commemoration of his work towards the conservation, we celebrate or basically observe this mangrove conservation day. So here guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good day.